This should be a pretty interesting video. The title of this video is Does God Permit Abortions? Does God Permit Abortions? And will you find or will you be able to find examples of abortion in the Bible? I'm going to speak on that. Can you find abortions in the Bible? Now, there's three scriptures I want to read to you and give some type of insight on these verses because there's a group of people out there that want to distort what the Bible is saying. They don't understand the scriptures. They error for not knowing the scriptures nor the power thereof. So they will use these scriptures, these verses, to justify abortions, to prove in their own minds that God permits abortion, that abortions are in the Bible when in reality is taken completely out of context. The first scripture I want to read is taken from the book of Exodus, the 21st chapter, reading the 22nd to the 25th verse. Now, I encourage you to make this video viral. I permit you to re-upload this video. Share this video. But according to Exodus, the 21st chapter, reading the 22nd to the 25th verse, it says, If men strive and hurt a woman with child. So if a man hurts a woman that's carrying a child, that's pregnant, so that her fruit depart from her, that the baby dies, she loses the baby, and yet no mischief follows. He shall surely be punished. I'm going to read that again. If men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her and yet no mischief follows, he shall be surely punished. So right there in that small portion, it tells you that abortion is not okay. And this is not even talking about abortions. The way modern women talk about abortions. It says, according as the woman's husband will lay upon him. And he shall pay as the judge determined. The 23rd verse says, and if any mischief follows. Then thou shalt give life for life. So it's okay to take that person's life if mischief continues. If you don't settle your differences and that person continues to stalk and harass, I'm going to use those terms, then you have a God-given right to take that life. The 24th verse says, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, foot for a foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. So man's got a right and obligation to protect his wife, especially if she's carrying a child. And because of a strife or a battle, Someone causes her to lose that child. That person shall be surely punished according to this verse. So no, this is not permitting abortion. This is not even talking about abortions. The next scripture is taken from Ecclesiastic, the sixth chapter, reading the third verse. And it reads as follows. If a man beget an hundred children and live many years so that the days of his years be many 
and his soul be not filled with good. In other words, if he live a long time and during his life on earth, his soul does not produce anything good or righteous and also that he have no burial, it says, I say that an untimely birth is better than him. So it's not saying that abortion is okay. It's just saying that it will be better for him. Not just in this life, but in the life to come. It will be better for him. That if he, or better yet, it's better for an untimely birth, or an untimely birth is better than him that lived a hundred years and produced no good in his soul. In other words, you're good for nothing. So no, that scripture is not talking about abortion. It's not saying that abortions are okay. I'll read that again. If a man begets a hundred children and live many years, so that the days of his years be many, and his soul be not filled with good, and also that he have no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than him. That's scripture number two. The third and final scripture is, I'm going to read it in its entirety. I'm not just going to read the small portion that they are, 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 are using to justify abortion, um, to say that God permits abortion or abortions are in the Bible. I'm going to read the entire, or just about the entire chapter. And this is taken from the book of Numbers, the fifth chapter, reading the 11th to the 31st verse. And I'm reading the whole thing for a purpose so that you can get context to what's going on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, so if a man's wife cheat on him, if she goes out and commit an adultery, the 13th verse says, And a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept closed, and she be defiled, and there be no witnesses against her, neither she be taken with the manner. The 14th verse says, and the spirit of jealousy come upon him. Now, this man has no proof that his wife cheated on him, but yet something inside of him is telling him that something is not right. That you are not being faithful to me. And of course, like in modern times, women will deny it. Oh, they will take a lie to the grave. You would never know. You would raise children that are not your own. And she would die knowing that those children are not your own. And you would continue treating them as if they're your own. But yet, if something happens where you need blood or an organ. And the doctor tell you there's no match. Now she's gone. And you left to hold the thought of. This is not my child. Who children am I raising or have I raised? So you got women that would take things to the grave and the man feels in his heart that you did something wrong. You're not faithful to me. So this is saying that or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him and he be jealous of his wife and she be not defiled. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest. This is how they did it back in biblical days. And he shall bring her offering for her. He bring an offering to the priest. 
in behalf of his wife because this man wants to know the truth. Today we have uh, paternity court, you know, and then they have Jerry Springer where they give you a lie detection test, you know, or paternity court where they take your, your, your uh, paternity test and find out that the child is not yours. Back in biblical days, this is their paternity test when they took you to the priest. And there's certain things that the priest could do to get the truth out of you. It says, Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephod of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense therein, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial. Bringing iniquity to remembrance. In other words, this is God's way of performing a lie detection test on you. The 16th verse says, And the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. The 18th verse says, And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head and put an offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath. In other words, this woman now has to take an oath. I solemnly swear that I'm telling you the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So the 19th verse says, And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanliness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causes the curse. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse with an oath among thy people. When the Lord doeth make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. So in other words, you will not be able to give birth to a child. This is not saying that the Bible permits abortions. This is not saying that abortions are even in the Bible. This is a curse upon a woman that lied, that cheated on her husband and lied. And this is God's way in these times, in those times, that you were given a lie detector test. All right? So this woman was lying. She cheated on her husband and lied about it. The husband was jealous. He was bothered by it, so he brought it before the priest. And now the priest is now giving this woman a spiritual lie detector test. Right? So this is not talking about abortion. I'm going to read that 22nd verse again. And this water that causes the curse shall go into, into thy bowels and make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. So she's agreeing to this. If she did nothing wrong, she's agreeing to this. The 23rd verse says, and the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall 
blot them out with the bitter water. Now, keep in mind, this is not dealing with abortions because abortions here is where they take tools and stick them inside the woman and chop off the baby's arms or legs or the head and just uh, completely destroy the child that's in the womb of a woman. This scripture has nothing to do with abortion. This is not even dealing with a pregnant woman. Right? This is talking about a woman that committed adultery and lied about it. She cheated on her husband. The 24th verse says again, and he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causes the curse. And the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. In other words, it shall become poisonous. That's what bitter means. It means poisonous. The 25th verse says, Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand and shall wave the offering before the Lord and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar. And afterward shall the cause of the woman, and afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. Now she's doing this willfully. She's not pregnant. But she's doing this willfully to prove that she was not unfaithful to her husband. The 27th verse says, And when he has made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespass against her husband, that the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter and her belly shall swell and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. It's not talking about abortions. And the 28th verse says, And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then, shall, then she shall be free, and shall conceive seed. I'm going to read that 28th verse again. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, in other words, if she's innocent, if she did not commit adultery, she did not cheat on her husband, it says, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. This is not talking about abortions. This is the law of jealousies. When a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled. Or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him and he be jealous over his wife and shall set the woman before the Lord and the priest shall execute upon her all this law. Then shall the man be guiltless from iniquity, and this woman shall bear her iniquity. So that's it. That's what that scripture is talking about. It's talking about cursing a woman that committed adultery, that went outside of her home and cheated with another man, and her husband became bothered or jealous, and he took her before the Lord to prove, to see if she cheated on him or not. This was their way of a lie detector test. So that had nothing to do with abortion. So abortions are not in the Bible, and God is not okay with abortions. Now, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, 
that we are a lie and the truth is not in us. So all blasphemies and sins will be forgiven with the exception of you blaspheming against the Holy Spirit or speaking evil against God's Spirit. But I will say this, that women that have gotten abortions, and I gave a description or an example of a young lady that had an abortion, and to this day it haunts her. Um, she's depressed, she's an alcoholic now, and she's always talking about the baby that she lost and, um, and she cries, you know, and this probably happened about 30, 40 years ago, but she's still, she's still tormented by that, you know, and I don't think she have any children today, but she made that choice and decision and she regrets it. But if she repents, she turn away from the evil. Now, there's women out there that had abortion and they say, oh, well, I was young. You know, I made a mistake. Uh, God will forgive me. Of course, God will forgive you. But if you still hold that same ideal that your body, your choice, no one has a right over your body. A man can't tell you what to do with your body and a woman shall have the right to choose to abort her own seed, if you still have that mindset in you, you are not forgiven. Because what that says is that you will do that again. You left the door open, you left the door cracked open to do it again. Although you say, God forgave me. See, God can only forgive you so many times. After which, he gives you up to vile affections. And he hands you over to a reprobate mind that you will believe a lie rather than the truth. And once you become a reprobate, all hope is gone for you. There's no second chance. You are predestined for hellfire. So if you truly repent of having that abortion that you had in your youth or whenever you had that abortion, then you supposed to com you supposed to completely turn away from it. Don't accept it, don't believe it no more. No abortions are wrong. It's evil. It's against God. You're murdering an unborn child. You don't take that demonic thought that it's just a fetus. That it's just a piece of tissue. Because like I mentioned in a prior video, in that fetus, although it's not developed into a human form, that fetus have everything, the talents, the gift, the soul, the spirit, the emotion, the laughter, the cries, everything that makes that person to be that individual person is all compacted into that fetus and it will grow it to be a human being. That's why in the scripture God says, I knew you from your mom's womb. From your mother's womb, I've known you. When you were just a fetus, had no shape, no form at all, I knew you. How did God know that piece of flesh well, God is a spirit. And they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God knew that spirit because that spirit was able to communicate with God. Because it wasn't the flesh that God was communicating with. It was the spirit of that child, the soul of that child. God breathed in man the breath of life and he became a living soul. So that breath of life is in that child, is in that fetus. So when you tell me that's just a piece of tissue and it's not human life, that's a life. And that child feels those tools in that abortion clinic. Research has been done on that. You just don't hear the cries. 
So, no, abortions are not in the Bible, and God does not permit abortions. So, feedback, tell me what you think, share this video, uh, re-upload this video if you choose to. Until next time, I'm fearless.